that's smooth. It had been 30 arduous years since I began C Plus Comedy. Its inception was daring. Deception? Conception. Who wrote this crap? Oh, I did. I'm sorry. <clears throat> In its first year, it was nothing. But by year two, it became the most watched late night online entertainment business news show of all time. No one could keep up with it. Since 2013, it's been the greatest thing to happen to the internet since hub sites. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I should have written that in the book. <laughs> uh, this uh, C plus comedy will never ever again be something that can be replicated. It's got tons of hit shows, news time, the Constitutionals podcast, the interviews, and the rest. I was the greatest person to ever step foot inside the company until year 10 when I was ousted by my producer, Ron. Ron is a racist, a sexist, and he actually put those words and attributed them to me. How dare he, Ron? How dare he? And then it was when Marjorie walked into the room. She saw the man that she'd always wanted to be with. He took out his long rod and slid it into every crevice on her. The two of them have never been so close. The thrusting, the sweat, the gasping for air. It was as if they were underwater fighting for their lives but they were in fact in a bedroom fighting for love and now an excerpt from the dirtier chapters the two of them never felt closer they were holding hands all right okay it's news time delivering to you the news you didn't know about the news you didn't care about and the news you didn't know you cared about with host chad white now here's that host chad white welcome back to news time i'm your host chad white and this is the audiobook news that you didn't know about. I hope you liked that live reading from the C plus comedy autobiography. It was poorly written and I went to college, this is true, for writing. I could not come up with anything better to say. It's a big book and just because it says the tender box on it does not mean I stole it from that book that was about the HBO network. Anyway, Audible has been around for 20 years, uh, relatively about 20 years or so. And it's a great company. Audible, if you don't know, yeah, you're able to just sign up for a subscription between $8 and $15 a month, and you can uh, get one credit or no credit. You get to you get a free audiobook every month that's yours to keep to use on Audible, and as well as uh, access to their exclusive podcasts. And uh, I think that's all Audible has. And maybe exclusive discounts on Audible audiobooks, but still, you got to use it on Audible. Uh, but it's a, it's a good company. It, it was purchased by Amazon in 2008 for around $300 million. So they obviously saw the future of what it is now and that people are going to want to listen to stuff. And uh, also, Amazon started out as a book selling company. So whatever. The deals for Audible, and I'm not talking about buying audiobooks, but the deals for Audible uh, that they're setting up with other people are getting more and more varied. And so they're really expanding out past uh, uh, audiobooks. Audible was just a place for audiobooks. And again, I mentioned before, now they're a place for limited series podcasts and, and things of that nature. There's a Vanity Fair story that has a, a made for audio, that was made for audio, that is recorded by Rachel Brosnahan, for instance. So that's how they're getting outside of just podcasts and audiobooks. Uh, the EVP and the head of co uh, U.S. content at Audible, Rachel Giazza, uh, on uh, 
has a has a reason why Audible succeeds in subscriptions. It's, is they develop and acquire many types of audio projects to reach as many customers as possible. And so that goes back to, you know, uh, something like a company like Spotify that they're reaching, they reached in the podcast recently with uh, Gimlet and, and purchasing all those and the Ringer and, and all the other podcasts in between there. And, uh, and they have lyrics uh, back onto their app, which is good, I guess. And, uh, and, and then pretty soon, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see some type of live streaming of concerts, maybe even introducing a video into, into the, uh, into the app of some sort. They've got a product for your car, the car thing, where you can just listen to music via, if you don't have a car that has audio jack or whatever, you can listen to it that way, whatever. It's great. Uh, and uh, so that's how Audible is reaching out and doing different things. They're going to be doing things like how Autumn, A-U-D, MN is uh, doing audio stories for uh, sites like New York Times, The Atlantic, for Wall Street Journal, I think. Uh, and, and so they're really producing those as well. Uh, and it, there's an ad based tier that is on the way too. So just like Disney Plus, just like Netflix, they can't just be a premium service. They're going to have to be able to reach out to the people who want to pay less than for $15 a month or less than $8 a month, or even they want to do it free but still be able to listen to their, to their audiobooks that they own. Uh, as well as in the subscription, you also get, uh, I think, around 11,000 audiobooks to listen to as well. The originals they produce cost between twenty dollars and $30,000 to make. Uh, so that's just, you know, like, a, like an originals podcast that they do. But some of them can be up to millions of dollars if the talent and the production are upped. So if they have somebody as big as, you know, Harrison Ford reading a Han Solo novel, then that's obviously going to cost more than uh, 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 a book that I wrote. <laughs> I don't know why I had to shoot myself down like that. Uh, and, if you, and, odd, and uh, originals usually take about four months from start to finish, and so that's, uh, that's where the production value goes as well. And uh, they even have things on their website like they have uh, a lot of, so as I mentioned, they have a lot of celebrity uh, readers. They also have uh, things like an audible blog, kind of like Netflix's To Dumb Fan Site, where they cover uh, the, the best audiobooks, so this is an article such, they cover the best audiobooks that uh, the famous people have read. So Claire Danes narrates Margaret Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale, which is real life. Can you guys believe that? It's real life. Uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal, <laughs> way too topical, uh, and way too out of my league. I should not have told that joke. Maggie, uh, joke, joke is a strong word. Maggie Gyllenhaal narrates Sylvia Plath's The Bell Jar. Meryl Streep narrates Heartburn by Nora Ephron. Lan Manuel Miranda and Karen Olive Olivo narrate uh, Juno Diaz's The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Woe. Wow. Uh, so it's a, it's a, they, Audible offers a lot, and I think the production behind them versus their competition such as Scribd, uh, and I can only assume Spotify at some point will get into audiobooks, or will start offering audiobooks at least. Uh, keep it off the main page, Spotify. I just want music. I don't care about audiobooks. I don't care about podcasts. I'm going to use something else for those things. Um, but uh, what Audible offers over something like Scribd and over the rest of them is uh, they have great exclusives and they also their production is just really good. What they lack is the ability to say Amazon wants to get out of the audiobook game. I want to be able to take that audiobook that I own, that I purchased, that I bought, and uh, and and save a backup of it. So anyway, that's that's what uh, Audible has to offer. It's a good app. It's a good. It's and and you know I quite frankly I think it's the uh, the better part of the Amazon media conglomerate. Listen, if you like what you heard here, and I don't know why you wouldn't, head on over to the website cpluscomedy.com where you can see me talk to your favorite comedians and uh, and, and probably read an audiobook at some point. I I'll do it. I'll do anything for money. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at cpluscomedy. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Chad Black White, like us on Facebook, listen to the Constitutionals podcast, not on Audible, Audible, but wherever you get your podcast. And uh, you know what? I think I have to retake everything in that audiobook read because I just realized I don't know how to read.